Today is the 26th of February. We're talking about Texas independence on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso. And we're streaming live on YouTube, the channel that we have there on Facebook, on El Paso History Radio Show page, and streaming live on Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When. And this is the place where we say Texas history begins, begins in, in El, El Paso. Paso. And that's in unison. Melissa, right. good morning. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody out there today? And I also want to remind people they can listen to us streaming live on Internet by uh, KTSMRadio.com, where you can click on the iHeartRadio link and take listen to us anywhere in the state, country, world. I'll bet you have a history moment. Yes, I do. In honor of Texas Independence Day, which is March 2nd, a little history about the Treaty of Hidalgo, and, uh, which came a few years later. March 2nd is the anniversary next week. That will be like on Wednesday, I believe. And so we've got some folks in here talking about Texas independence. I want to welcome on the left of your radio, if you're looking on the pictures, Patricia Kidney. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome here. Great. Just great to be here. Thank you kindly for figuring out how to do all this. And on the other chair, we've got Sharon Fortner. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome here. Well, thank you. I appreciate the invitation. And you all are with the uh, going to bring us some Texas independence information. And you're both members of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas. Let's start with what is that? I've got it written down here that it's the uh, it's a lineal association dedicated to perpetuating the memory of the founding families and soldiers of the Republic of Texas. Is that close? That's close. That's perfect. Okay, that's what I got it from your website. But uh, and your, your website is drtinfo.org. If people are looking for that, Daughters that's correct. Republic of okay, who wants to go for how we're going to get here? Uh, what's next? I will start it. I will start off. Just to give you all a great history lesson, we want to talk about the battles along the road to Texas independence. And the very first one was in Gonzales, Texas. This is when a group of settlers who had been there since 1825 decided they were sick and tired of being under the thumb of Mexico. And they didn't like the repres not having representation. They didn't like being mistreated. They really decided they didn't want anybody else telling them what to do. So they had been given a little cannon. And it's this little cannon. Let's see here. If you'll help me. You'll do that for me. A very small little cannon was given to them. Well, they got a big one there. Uh, picture of it, right? All right. There it is. And uh, so... Mexico decided they wanted this cannon back, and the folks said, no, we need it, that we need protection from the Indians, and it's ours. Well, they, they really were coming in strong on them, and they made a stand. They filled that with scrap metal, and they made a flag that says, come and take it, and then they met them at the river. And before you know it, the battle was over. And they really took charge. It was the first step of Texas independence, the big fight for it. The next one. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Where, where you want to go with it? Where I'm, we want to go. All you guys right. Are loose here. So this was in October 2nd of 1835. Well, punch, uh, excuse me, not Pancho Villa, the other side, <laughs> Antonio Santiana was the uh, military leader of Mexico. He was also the president of Mexico at the time. He was sick and tired of those rebel forces. And in December of 1835, he declared that all rebelling foreigners were going to be executed, not taken prisoner, executed. They would be given no quarter. How did he define that? Do you have, have any idea what he meant by a foreigner? Oh, anybody who was on the opposing side of ah, the Mexican army. I see. That That's would, how it was defined. That would do Even it. though they had come to Texas on an invitation to come to yes, Texas they because they rebelled, yes. they became a foreigner. That's right. Ah, that'd do it they, to you. they were fighting against the army, so therefore they were a foreigner. Mm -hmm. So so things start progressing, um, a lot of unrest, and they end up in February at the Alamo. And this is when things get really, really dicey. And they, they decide to just meet there, stay there. And they kept sending out uh, messages, we need reinforcements. There were just a little over 200 at the Alamo. 
and they were called Texicans back then. So these Texicans decided they were going to stay and fight the huge Mexican army that was coming right at their door. You're talking about the Battle of the Alamo. The Battle of the Alamo. Wow. So this went on for 13 days. And what I'd like to tell you is there were people from all over the world. They came from six foreign countries. There was a regiment of people from Tennessee, over 30 people from Tennessee came. A bunch of them came from South Carolina. Then you had all of these people who had come with the 1824 settlement. They were all coming to make a stand to fight against the Mexican army. And as Melissa said, they had been invited to be That's there. That's right. Yeah, they'd opened. They wanted people to settle the lands there. And all of a sudden, they were no longer happy with them. Right. There were a lot of well, considerations well, that made them unhappy. What was uh, Santiana demanding at that point? Did he just... He was demanding that they be annihilated. You know, it wasn't that you quit, you go home, and we'll let you live. They they were opposing him and the army in Mexico. So you're you're on the opposite side. I guess if they had not opposed him any further, that might have been okay. But that didn't. That's not what happened. At that point, they couldn't back down uh, because it was death either way. Well, you stay and fight, you're going to be killed. Oh boy! If you surrender and you're taken prisoner, you're going to be executed. Mm -hmm. So it was beginning to be a really important thing for all people living in Texas. So you want to go on to that? Well, one? before you go on, I have something to say about the, the Alamo Please. that I, that I found recently to be so interesting on our website, drtinfo.org slash members. You can see a five-minute video called The 32 Immortal, Immortals. Patricia mentioned this about the letters that went out, yes. recruiting people to come. Yes. Travis pleaded. He pleaded mightily. Out of the seven letters that were sent out, only one regiment in, in all of the area responded, and it was from Gonzalez. It was from Gonzalez. That's and right. so this uh, documentary that's on our website is told by the descendants of these 32 immortals from Gonzales. It's quite moving. So I invite everybody to go to the website and look at that little short video because I think that in Gonzales, every family has a framed picture of the Travis letter hanging in their living oh, room. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. Don't and you so, think so? Again, the, the, uh, yeah. right. the website it's is a letter. It, state the website again, if you don't mind. Well, there are two websites, drtinfo.org, which mm -hmm. is the public website, <clears throat> drtinfo.org forward slash members. And that gives you a little bit more information if you are trying to become a member or are a member and need to keep up with the things that are happening. So this was an interesting time in, in, the, mm -hmm. in the world, but in Texas particularly, it, these are the ground uh, swells and ground movements mm -hmm. for, for how Texas became what it is. Exactly. And so these people who were not friends with Santiana were told basically, um, good luck or get lost. And then they fought. And the ones we know the ones at the Alamo didn't make it. Is that basically what happened? Most of them were killed. There were a few who did go out during the night. And uh, there were two women who were there as well. And they were let go by Santa Ana. If you, the rest of them were killed during the battles. If you tour the Alamo now, how much of that information is there? <clears throat> it's all there. You hear all the history? It's all there. You get to walk all the steps all these people took? I did. I have done that several times. Describe being, that, if you don't mind. Well, being a very, I mean, when I say I'm a native Texan, I was born in deep South Texas, raised there. My roots are there, and I'm really excited to be focusing on Texas history today. And uh, first time I went to the Alamo, I was 18 years old and I was just a knucklehead. I didn't appreciate it. I was excited about my senior trip. I was going to say it's a school trip. It, sounded it was like. a school trip and I was excited. So it all went over my head. How far from there did you grow up? Um, I grew up in the lower Rio Grande Valley, uh, south of San Antonio. So it's all the way to the Rio Grande River. It's where I grew up near 
Donna, Rio Hondo, uh, in B County. 100 plus miles. Oh, more. Yeah. Probably 250, I would okay. think. Yeah. And people should recognize this voice, Patricia Kidney. She is the one who often is on the radio program talking about Concordia Cemetery. That's right. So today you're a little outside of that boundary. But I'm am, sure you can connect Concordia to, Concordia to this. I can, but we'll save that Coming to up the end. Later yes, in the show. Yes, Fair yes. enough. But then I went back in 1985. I'd met a man from upstate New York who really wanted to come and see Texas. And through his eyes, I saw all the places I had heard about all my life, places that meant nothing to me. But suddenly I'm watch, I'm seeing it in new eyes. And I realized that my elevator music personality nah. was, was not who I really was. We'll pick up the story about your friend from New York in a minute. We're going to take a break here <laughs> on the El Paso History Radio Show. Sharon, Sharon Fortner and Patricia Kidney are our guests. Melissa, how are we doing? We're doing good out there. We've got a lot of people. We've got, uh, let's see, I was trying to, we have some out of the state area. Oh, we have Angie, of course, up there in Colorado where you used to live, Sharon. Uh, Anthony, New Mexico, that's next state over. Tennessee, oh no, somebody was, Margie uh, Benton referred to Davy Crockett as coming from Tennessee because we talked about people mm -hmm. coming from different parts of the country. Yeah, you got to mention him. He's got the yeah. movie. He had Davey. the movie. We're coming he, up on it. Too. He had the fiddle. <laughs> so, ah. uh, Colorado, I said, uh, I had somebody else here, but. Yeah, some great people are paying attention, and I'm just now posting a link to the DRT's website where you can find the information that they were talking about and watch the video and learn even more. We'll take it up in a minute. We've got a major announcement coming at the, uh, after the announcements in the next break. We should be back right here in a few minutes on the El Paso History Radio Show. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915 915- 581 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140. We are talking Texas independence today, and you may have heard a promo there for next week, which will be a discussion about a, uh, a TV show coming up. We'll get you the details coming up in the rest of the program. All right. Let you know that we are the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook, and you should go there for our weekly promo announcements of the topics on the program each week. And also, we have a TV channel to see free videos about El Paso uh, history on YouTube and YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV. And there's uh, about a dozen uh, DVD types of documentaries I produced. They are all there on that channel. Also, 20 segments from our ABC7 series, El Paso History TV. They were called on ABC7. And they're now online there, youtube.com, El Paso History TV. And that's an interesting thing we've done there. And you can take a look again. It's youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Well, I want to tell you about one of our favorite spon- uh, show sponsors, and that's Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, located in Canyon at 6761 Donovan Drive. Call Pepe or Lorena at 915-877-2152 for a to-go order or for catering for your next special event. And don't forget, Pepe's is the home of the one and only Margarita. I think most of us in the room here are going to be out, out there today after the radio show. I think so. we should have one in honor of uh, <clears throat> Texas Independence. Hey, let's start with one. Let's, let's, okay, <laughs> I think All we right. should. Here's a big <laughs> announcement we have to make uh, at this point. It, it's an interesting thing that changes are coming to the radio show. And they're coming to the El Paso History Radio Show. I decided I wasn't sure how to phrase all this, <clears throat> but I was asked by El Paso Inc. Uh, uh, publisher to create something that would explain what's going on here. And here it is. Uh, the radio show uh, has two longtime hosts retiring. That's you and me, Melissa. Yeah. Oh, we, we are? Oh. We are <laughs> retiring. You knew that. <laughs> but, wasn't uh, I, I've been on the show for the more than two decades, and Melissa Sargent, a co-host for more than 10 years, returning the program over to a familiar voice. And I joined the show in 2001 as co-host and producer with the late and legendary Leon Metz, who founded the weekly live exploration of El Paso's rich history and heritage. And Metz retired in 2011, and Melissa Sargent became co-host. The program airs each Saturday morning on KTSM AM 690. The program will go on, however. The new host will be Jackson's son, Andrew J. Polk, an already familiar voice on the station. He also hosts Talk El Paso weekdays from 4 to 6 p.m. here on the station. The El Paso History Radio Show will continue to focus on the region's fascinating history and discussions with guests from El Paso and beyond. Few cities are lucky enough to boast of a regular program devoted to its rich history. And I want to take a moment here and say thank you, Melissa Sargent, for your dedication. Oh, no problem. You, you, and I thank you for having me. I mean, you know, I thank Leon. I thank you. I thank the KTSM. It's been a lot of fun. Well, I thought it'd be a good idea to have you come in here and, and start the history moment. So we did that. And I think it's been a great ride, and I'm sorry to see it ending, but it's a good time to end basically when we're still able to end it as opposed to somebody yeah. carrying us out in a basket. And we're, we're never ending enjoying the history of Texas. No, that's you know, just it. Mine's going to expand beyond here, so it's going to be more exciting. You've got big plans coming, and also it's going to be an interesting thing to watch to see how this continues on with, with Andrew. Andrew, your thoughts? Do you have any thoughts at this point? Oh, yeah. I mean, this entire show and everything that is part of it stands on the legacy of Giants yourselves, uh, Leon Metz included, and of course, everyone that listens and participates in this and helps prove that history is an interest and not just a uh, subject to be fussed over. And it's alive for a whole lot of people today. And that's what I am excited to continue talking about and keep the legacy of the show and everything that has gone into it, keeping it going. I'm glad you're available. I wasn't sure how we might ever make a transition, but with your availability, this will work out nicely. Thank you very much. 
And he is an announcer Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. here on KTSM. So we hope everybody will spot, you know, support the show and continue. Uh, yeah, and continue listening. Keep calling to, in, keep, you know, contributing. Doing so. things. And also the, the history show being what it is, we sort of hit a vein here in El Paso <clears throat> of people who are interested in this. And it'll continue, obviously, as we say. But it's an interesting thing to, to realize. I mean, 22, 21 years for me is a long time to do anything. And it's probably the most I've ever done anything one thing. So anyway, that's where we are. All right, back to the Texas Independence. Patricia well, Kidney. Yes, and before I jump in there, I would like to add that I have been a radio listener here in El Paso since I moved here in 1967. I started listening to Leon in uh, the 80s, and then I heard him one day pleading for help for Concordia in 1992. So I have been one who's listened and promoted and and supported the efforts of everything you've done. For me, it's been a, a way to bring all historical groups together. We all know what each, each other one is doing. We can support each other. We've been able to become more cohesive, I think, because of the efforts of this radio show. So I appreciate both of you more than I can ever express. And thank you for that. <laughs> it's been kind of a tough moment here to, to go through this. But uh, like I said, I think it's time we should move on. Here we go. You always want to go out on top. Well, that's kind of what we're doing. Yeah. And, and it's really an interesting <laughs> you don't thing. Wanna, you don't want to go out in a box. Like yeah, I, said, I was just going to say, you don't want to be carried out by some Paul Bear. Uh, end yeah. up in Concordia. <laughs> well, yeah, I want to I want to walk above ground and, and talk about but history. You'd be with some good people. I mean, that's there's some great right. people there. So. That's right. And we'll be yeah. continuing, perhaps yeah. contributing from time to right. time to the morning show on Saturday. Sure. And Andrew will be running. It'll be an interesting adventure. See how far that goes. We will support in and, every way. And if you hear the bell, that means another history person has uh, tuned, his wing. tuned in. <laughs> gone, gone on. Yes. Interesting yes. stuff All right. here. Are you ready for it? Well, let's go back to your New York friend. All right. Well, my New York friend was so excited about history. And, and he really, really opened up my heart to my Texas roots. So we went to the Alamo on one of our visits, and I started crying. I cried throughout my entire tour, walking the grounds, uh, the floor, the flooring, I, in each room, knowing that people died. They were executed. They, some of them died in battle. Some of them were then executed. Um, but they stood there against all odds. And there have been different numbers, but according to uh, some of the historians I respect, the number of the uh, Santa Ana's army was 10,000. And there were these tw 200 people there defending it. And I did not mention them. I kind of had wanted to save it. But we had William Barrett Travis. We had Davy Crockett. We had Jim Bowie, James Butler Bonham. And, of course, all of those 32 from Gonzalez who so valiantly left knowing what their fate was going to be. These people just stood there and said, I will die here. They had a belief system and they did that to prove it. Yes. And we are so proud as daughters of the Republic of Texas to uphold their legacy. It's It goes to the bottom of my heart to be able to stand up and talk about this. Well, it's good to hear you say that Patricia Kidney and Sharon Fortner is the other person in the room. We need to take a break here at this point. You want to have a phone call or two? We could take yeah, a phone call. Give us a call. What is that number? It starts with 915. Yes, it does. 915. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso history radio show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. 
And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud. All right, let you know a couple of things here. www.celebrationofourmountains.org. Go there to find out about a bunch of things going on with the mountains and celebrations everywhere. On March 6th, that would be like... Uh, 
next Sunday a week mineral collecting hike at Tortugas Mountain in Las Cruces with Dr. Eric Kappas. Get a hold of Jim Talbert. He's there at Celebration of Our Mountains, or you can call him at 915-525-7364. Monterey S. Management is now M1EP Management Corp., and they are a superior property management services company. And you can visit their website at M1EP for more details or call their office at 915-592-4549 to learn more about their services. Now, if you're looking to sell, buy, or rent a home, then you need to call this number, 915-588-1850, and talk with Patrick Tuttle. He's with the Colville Banker Heritage Real Estate. Patrick is also a top-selling is a top selling realtor and is a person to go to to buy, sell, or rent a home. Call Patrick today at 915-588-1850. He's a good guy. He knows what he's doing in El Paso yeah. in real estate. Also, we're now back with the idea of uh, Texas independence. And it's something we've never really uh, attacked here on as a subject on this day, on this radio show. I never knew much about it as a kid. I went to El Paso schools, and that was the one thing they did when they got to Texas history was explain some of that. And I'd seen the movie with Davy Crockett in it, so I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I know all about this. Well, those movies don't really portray what happened. They make it a little more glorious, I think, than the 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 story you guys are unfolding here for us. Also, there's a couple of pictures of Travis, I think, that have now – Mm-hmm. occurred you got a picture of travis uh, uh, we're looking at and also maybe travis's letter that's the man there we're on their facebook feed and if you want to see these uh these pictures later on if you're not if you're just hanging out on the radio we have this uh archive now on el paso uh history radio show on facebook so you can go there and take a look at it as an archive later all right patricia you want to uh, continue on where we were going well we're still at the alamo we're still under siege and uh one thing i wanted to point out was talking about the people who were defending the Alamo. That included the Mexicans who had lived in the Texas area, and they supported this fight. They were not in the army. They were settlers who had lived on this ranch land or this property all those years. They joined the defending the Alamo as well. And they, these are people who are mixed in from the north from United States coming there. And also this crowd you're referring to came over from Mexico. They had lived there from the beginning of time, probably. Oh, okay. So they were, because this land was so vast and it wasn't until 1824 that the Austins, Moses and Stephen F went to Mexico and said, we are answering your call for settlers and we want to bring in people. So this is how the Texans got started being part of it. So the Austin people. So yes. the people named Austin. Well, the old 300, the first 300 as they call them. And, and as they were settling along this, this corridor, then of course the people who were living there prior to the settlements, they had land there. So they decided they would join this fight for independence. So we have all these mixed people there, and they're all standing there, and they are fighting for their independence because they know what's going to happen if they aren't free. Do they have some cannons? The cannons were over uh, at San Jacinto. Okay. Yes. So the Alamo didn't have any defending no. cannons. Well, they, they may have. Yes, they did. They had some. I'm not. I am talking. My expertise is talking about the people who were there. Okay. And but they did have a lot. Yes, they were firing cannons back. So at the end, at the end, when everything settles, it falls. The Alamo falls, and uh, on March sixth, it ends with 253 dead Texicans. Tejanos, everybody together. There were over 1,600 dead Mexican soldiers. There were a couple of women survivors who were let go. And one, Susanna Dickinson, has uh, a baby daughter by the name of Angelina, the angel of of, Of the Alamo. Alamo. And uh, Susanna's husband was one of the casualties. They were part of the early settlers. And then... A lady who was a nurse by the name of Madame Andrea Candelaria, a trained nurse who was later 
awarded a pension as a reward for her services at the Alamo. First time I'd known about her. So you learn something new. So, so then everything, and by the way, Susanna Dickinson is going, she went to uh, Gonzales. Well, then things start happening. The, um, right after the fall of the Alamo comes the Goliad massacre. Before you get to Goliad, let me mention one thing that I found online that uh, I think we can talk about. And that is that the daughters of the Republic of Texas are known for the former role as caretakers of the Alamo. In uh, early 2015, the Texas mm-hmm. Land Office, Commissioner George P. Bush removed control and put it in the General Land Office. But the DRT were also custodians of the French Legation Museum until 2017. And so there's a, a long history for your crowd yes. to being mixed into right. the... Uh, and Sharon will talk about that in, in more detail and okay. give you a lot of information about the role of the DRT. So, But we're over two weeks later, 11 days later, really. From the Alamo. From the Alamo, the uh, there was a fort called Fort Defiance. It was at the Presidio La Bahia, which was at Goliad. So uh, James Fannin was over there, and he had 400 men, and he had been ordered to in- evacuate. But there were little skirmishes going around all in that area. The thing I learned in my research was th- these were not the only hot spots but there were little there were little groups throughout and they would be defeated or else they would run to a bigger group to help out santa anna was on the march and he was marching to towards sam houston who Edna. was yes yeah, so that's why this this route and i think we have it up there goes northeast and it's headed toward houston um but there at goliad they, uh, Fannin waits a little too long to evacuate. When he does start out, they're not prepared. They don't have enough food. They don't have, they're, they're not taking it as seriously as they should. And they stop and take a siesta. And suddenly Santa Ana's army. They show up. Shows up. Now these names should be known, uh, are known to a lot of people in El Paso because there are many public schools that bear the names of these Texas, uh, yeah. People. Yes, that's true. Fannin, you mentioned. Uh, Fannin, Crockett. Uh, those Houston. Are two. Yes, of course. Austin, Austin High Austin, School. Austin. You went to Austin. <laughs> hey, Austin. Austin. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, so there then uh, they have just, uh, they have 400 men. Fannin had 400 men and he met up with a, an army of Mexican soldiers consisting of 1,400 men. Well, wow. they were. Uh, they were being wounded. Fannin realized his men were being killed. There were some sick ones. There were wounded ones. He decides to do a surrender, an unconditional surrender. And they're thinking they're going to be shipped off and taken into Mexico and put in prison, maybe. But uh, too late, they realized it was when you surrendered, it meant death. They killed them all. Yes. So the sadness of this was that they took them out in different groups under the pretense they were going to go gather wood or maybe drive cattle. And all of a sudden, they're being fired on. There were a few people left in the chapel at Goliad, and they were the sick and the wounded. They were lined up and executed right there at the walls of the chapel. And this is in Goliad. In Goliad. Now, what? Where is that location now? Is that in? And that's the name of the town. Or? Yes, it's um, it's southeast of San Antonio. Um, it's, gosh, I've been there. I've I've walked the. It's, it's a neat place, and it's, it's a big it's, building. It looks like yeah, that, the, that was there. there you was, have, that a, was that a, that's. Was that a Catholic yeah. church of some kind yes, to begin the, with? Yes, it was a, a mission, yes. Just like yes, the, the one at the Alamo was. Right, there. right. So, guys, on Palm Sunday on the 17th, uh, excuse me, the 27th of March, they were all lined up, they were executed, but Fannin was the last one. He was made to watch the execution. Oh, boy. Yeah. So the interesting thing is that he said, I, I realize I'm going to be killed, but I have three dying wishes. One, I would like to be shot in the chest. 
Two, I would like to be given a Christian burial. And three, I would like to have my watch sent to my family. How do we know that's what he said? Well, there are people there who survived and recorded that. I'll be darned. We had a lady known as the Angel of Goliad who who was instrumental in saving a lot of lives. So if you don't know Texas independence and you're listening to this, you're finding out that this was a pretty rough time. It was very rough. So let me tell you what happened to Fannin. He was shot in the face. He was burned with all the rest of the bodies. They were all piled up and burned. Oh boy. And his watch was kept by the commanding general Urea. So there were 350 of those soldiers executed. And uh, the angel of Goliad convinced the commander of the Mexican army to let the others go because they were doctors, interpreters, and just ordinary people. They were not soldiers. So about 20 were survive, survived that. And that's the Battle of Goliad. That's the Battle of Goliad. So, right. so suddenly it is Santa Ana. He had a reputation of being a brilliant, brilliant strategic man in the army. And suddenly he's known as a bloodthirsty, terrible, cruel guy. And there is a town in Texas called Santa Ana. Yes, there is. And how did you any idea with that history at all? I don't know. I've been through it. And it was uh, on, a, on a Sunday. Nothing was open. And it's, there's really just a, there's very little there. You would wonder why that, that's, I've I've been there one time driving through. Yeah, I know. It's like, well, why? Yeah. Well, you have the Santa Ana in California. You have the Santa Ana winds, which they relate to. They blame it on this guy, same guy? Yeah. Yeah. But I just, I find it odd with the fervor of remember the Alamo. Now it's remember Goliad. Oh, yeah. You know, the battle cries. I find it interesting that uh, a town would be named there. I'm going, I'm really reverting back to my early Texas personality. So I have to be nice. Uh, Please do. Well, there again, don't you think everybody in the city of Goliad has a come and take it flag or banner? Well, everyone does in, in, in Gonzales. Uh, I don't think, I don't know about Goliad. Goliad is really focused on at from what I've when I've been there. Tough history of Texas yeah. here, Texas Makes independence. It's tough. You think oh, we're well, yeah. little wins, it, it wasn't the simple matter to get here. And so we should be taking a break here right about now. And we're talking Texas independence, which is kind of rough and tumbled there in, in its history. And um we've got Sharon Fortner here and Patricia Kidney. And Melissa, should we take a break? Yeah, we shall. I'm posting up a link to the uh Fannin Memorial Monument site where you can take a picture or take a look at it and learn about that. It's a very, very fascinating monument. We were there Jeez, a couple of years ago. Really All right. Impressed. Taking a break on the El Paso History Radio Show. Back in just a moment. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. 
The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American... All right, we've got lots going on here. We've got to tell you about all kinds of interesting things. He, uh, it's a podcast uh, about El Paso history, music history, and it's called Talk and Rock Radio. We thank Rick Kern for putting that together. Go to talkandrockradio.com and find out what's been going on. Uh, in the, and he inter interviews some interesting people. Mission Del Rey is the place for out-of-town visitors to get souvenirs, southwestern jewelry, and collectibles, and great decor to give your home a southwestern flair. Don't miss their clearance section, which includes scratch and dent items, as well as closeout items. You can shop online at missiondelray.com or visit their store located at 1421 North Lee Trevino, Suite A7. Mission Del Rey's phone number is also 915-440-2140. And don't forget to mention that you'd heard it here on the El Paso History Radio Show, and you'll get a discount. A discount. This is a great place. I was out there not long ago. Interesting store. It really is. And the easiest way to get there. Its address is, is on uh, is on Lee Trevino, but it's easier to, if you go all the way to Pelicano from I-10 mm -hmm. and take a left because it's a big, huge address, and, and they're at the top end of it near Pelicano. They're so. in a business complex there. Yeah. I remember the name uh, of it. But it, Google, Google it'll take you right there, too. Oh, yeah. Google map it. It's a lot easier that way. All right. We're about to wrap up this hour, but we've got this whole idea for the second hour as well, Texas Independence. Patricia Kidney here along with Sharon Fortner. And the idea of, of Texas Independence it sounds interesting to look at it in a, in a historical perspective and look back on it, but that was a mess. I mean, that was a lot of people getting killed back then. And, and, and if you don't really think about it, it's a lot easier to say, Oh yeah, we're independent. But in, in, in Texas is the only state that ever declared its own independence. That's right. And so that makes it a lot of distinctions here, but there's a lot of people paid for it dearly and it's tough history. And at some point in the next hour, we're going to relate this, it's all about what's under the ground here known in El Paso as Texas, but it also has some influences on what happened here later on. And so we'll get to that next hour. You want to summarize where we've been, Patricia Kidney? Yes. Uh, everything started in uh, probably 1825 when Gonzalez started their settlement. They were under the thumb of the Mexican government. They became unhappy. They decided to... Uh, fight for the right to make their own decisions. So in 1835, in October, there was a battle called the Come and Take It Cannon, and they opposed the Mexican army by whipping them there at the Gonzales, defeating the Mexican army. That enraged the Mexican president, Santa Ana, and he happened to be head of the military forces, and he started 
trying to squash these rebelling foreigners who were opposing Mexico and their regime. So then we get on into, there's a big battle at the Alamo. We talked about 13 days of just hard fighting and the Alamo falling to the Mexico Mexicans. And then we talked about uh, being at Goliad 10, 11 days later and having all of the captured Texans killed by being executed. And it really set the stage for total rebellion and the terms, remember the Alamo, remember mm-hmm. Goliad, fired up every person living in the Texas area. That's a tough history, but it's our history. And we will, uh, as I say in the second hour, relate it to El Paso. Because basically whatever happened over there, we turned into that set, that government. That's right. Music coming here. We're going to take a break on the El Paso History Radio Show for the news. Don't go away. We're going to hit the Battle of San Jacinto next. And that was a biggie. Yeah, and that's... we know it because we got the plaza downtown. That's right. <laughs> There's got to be something to do with that. I, you'll, you'll tell us, though, right? Yes. yes, you will. All right. See you next hour on the El Paso History Radio Show. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915 915- Five eight one zero 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 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020 with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show. 
which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 
1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC. And starting hour two of the El Paso History Radio Show with an El Paso History Moment. Produced by Melissa Sargent for the El Paso History Alliance page. And her story today is about the Gadsden Purchase. Land deal for the ages. In 1848, the war between U.S. and Mexico ends when the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo is signed. A few years later, the Gadsden Purchase becomes a reality and the U.S. pays then-Mexican Presidente Santa Ana $15 million or $42 million in today's money for just enough Mexican territory to clear a southern route to the Pacific Ocean, therefore opening a year-round passage to the west and seaports on the California coast guaranteeing unlimited economic opportunities for the southwest. Unfortunately for Santa Ana, the Gadsden Purchase was so unpopular in Mexico that he was removed from office for the 11th and final time and exiled to Cuba. More history next time on El Paso History Moments. I'm Melissa Sargent for the El Paso County Historical Commission. Oh, the Commission. That's another Mm. group there as well. But you normally do this for the History Alliance. Yes. If you enjoy hearing about El Paso and, and the region's history, then you need to visit these Facebook pages, the El Paso History Alliance, which is a group of historians who promote the architectural history and culture of El Paso and is managed by Max Grossman and Mark Stone. And then there's Remember in El Paso Win with thousands of pictures and stories and much more. And it's managed by Barbara Given Bainey and her team of volunteer editors who work really hard on that page. Otherwise known as BGB. We like what she does and it's a good page. And if you want to go see something interesting, they probably have it in their archives, either as a story or as a picture. Yeah. And she works very hard at that. So we should uh, thank her kindly for her volunteer effort basically there. She's the chief administrator and the owner, Barbara Given Bainey. Also, admins are Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret Smith, Paul Louis, Ben Vincent, and Ken Weiss. Yeah. And also, we have another major announcement coming this hour about a TV show coming up on next Tuesday night. So we'll get to that at some point as we now go back to the story of Texas independence. And our guests are Patricia Kidney and Sharon Fortner. And where are we going now, Patricia Kidney, Sharon Fortner? Well, we are now headed toward the final battle. But before we can get there for the Battle of Texas Independence, we have the runaway scrape. Scrape. The, scrape. S-C-R-A-P-E. Mm-hmm. And this was going toward the Louisiana-Texas border. And the families, the settlers were caught in between uh, Sam Houston's army, which was heading over to the Houston area to make a stand, and Behind them was Santa Ana's Mexican forces coming up. So everyone in their way was being killed or slaughtered. And um, they quickly said, we have got to get the heck out of Dodge. So this thing lasted from March 11th until April 21st. 41 days, these people threw everything they had in a wagon or some of them were horse-drawn. Some people just walked and carried their stuff. Some people, uh, it was was difficult. They went through tough, tough terrain. There was bad weather. You know, springtime in Texas is pretty rough. Rain and wind. uh, People died along the way. They didn't have enough food. They were sick. They would just have to be They didn't even have time to bury these people. They were terrified because Pancho Villa's army was right on their trail. And, um, of course, the cry of remember the Alamo, remember Goliad, they were terrified to try to get out of the way of the Mexican army. So in doing this, they had learned that, uh, that Sam Houston was going to make a stand over along the Houston area near Buffalo Bayou. So it all comes to a head April 21st. And and, and, and there are 1,200 Mexican troops and there are 910 Texicans and they were able to surprise Santa Ana's army because they were having, the army was having a siesta time. The Mexican the army. The Mexican army oh, was well. having a siesta and uh, there are uh, some pretty documented 
rumors about where Santa Ana's attention was being directed. <laughs> and that's not really, he was not paying attention to the battle. I believe there was a young woman involved. Yes, there was a young woman. <laughs> so he was the having rose, a siesta. Yes, he was having a siesta. The Yellow Rose of Texas? The, ro the Yellow Rose of Texas. That's who that was? Yes, oh. yes, 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 yes. So then the Texican, Sam Houston and his force, has two cannons set up. And they were called the Twin Sisters. And these Twin Sisters started booming and bellowing and, and the cry of, remember the Alamo, remember Goliad. And I mean, the Texas Army was head up, as we like to say in Texas. Their blood was running hot. And they managed to whip in 18 minutes. It was an 18-minute battle. And it was all over. and. Let's see, there were 630 Mexican army soldiers killed, 730 were taken prisoner, and Texas had nine men killed. Wow, so the surprise did work. Surprise. Now, here's the really interesting part about this great president of Mexico who had been president throughout his lifetime 11 times, we just heard. This man ran for his life. He was dressed in a simple soldier's clothing. Oh, so he changed to look like he was just not the same guy. Right. He did not have on the heavily decorated uniform. Oh, okay. He takes off and he <laughs> runs away and leaves his army just there. And? And he is captured the next day. The Texan who captured him didn't have any idea who he was. But he brought him back to Sam Houston on the way when he passed all the prisoners that had been taken. <laughs> One of the prisoners uh -huh. says uh, something about El Presidente <laughs> and recognizes him and, and refers to him. And they realize, holy cow, we've got Santa Ana right here. Oh, boy. The big guy. So that's how it all came to pass. And there was a big deal about, I think Sam Houston got, got wounded in this event. He was, he was wounded at, and, uh, but he survived that. So, so then of course, El Presidente was not executed, was not treated, uh, with the same treatment that his armies had treated everybody else. And how'd that work? Well, it, <laughs> it kind of went on to, he was able to sign the documents needed. To, he he surrendered, and then they went into, they signed the uh, Treaty of Velasco, which totally ended the war, and that was on, Ma on May 14th of 1836. Was it to some sort of uh, fraternal organization that they were both members of? Yes, I've heard they were uh, Masons. Freemasons. That's what I've heard. Yeah. And apparently, uh, Santa Ana, from what I heard, one account, he gave a distress sign to Sam Houston who said, I can't kill this guy. Something to that effect. Have you heard that one, Sharon? No, nope, haven't heard I, it. No, I haven't, haven't heard that one. That, one. That, no. that sounds a little. No. And, and Santa Ana was not executing people. I mean, the guy had, he had been captured. The Texans were going by the rules of. Yeah. Of combat. So anyway, so then uh, in my summary, what I want to say is this. There are eight inscriptions on the monument of San Jacinto. And that big monument is right there. And it says, and so what we want to talk about is that it was the most decisive battle of the world. The freedom Up of the, that, the, that time. Uh, it says it was one of the most decisive battles of the world. We're looking back at it. Sure. The freedom of Texas from Mexico won here led to the annexation and then to the Mexican War, resulting in the acquisition of the United States of all of these states, the state of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, California, Utah, parts of Colorado, Wyoming, Kansas, and Oklahoma. Almost one third of the present area of the American nation, nearly a million square miles of territory, changed sovereignty. So 
that's the importance of the battle for independence of Texas. That included El Paso. Absolutely. So in saying that, I want to add that I have been to all of these sites that I've talked about. In 2010, I was at a Texas Historical Commission convention in Houston. Our field trip was to go to the San Jacinto Monument, where they happened to be doing a reenactment of the battle. April 21st, 2010, I was among a group, put in a golf cart, driven out to where the battle site was. They were reenacting even better than Six Guns does. And ah, that's saying a lot. It does. Yeah. I mean, they were, I mean, and the crowd was sort of passive. But then I'm starting to yell, you know, uh, remember the Alamo, remember Goliad, Viva Las Texans. Did, did they pick, did the audience they, pick it up? They all picked it up and started <laughs> yelling, you know, I almost caused a riot oh, over boy. there. And but, not, not you, Patricia Kidney. Oh, uh, no. So, and, and then I have one of the, this little pen I got over here, uh -huh. and it marks that day. So it was one of the most exciting hands-on feel trips I think I've ever taken. Interesting story you hit, relate there. We need to take a break at this point. Sharon, you're going to come back and talk more about this? I sure will. Okay. Sharon Fortner's here. And Patricia Kidney, and uh, who's got the uh, Facebook stuff going on? Andrew, oh, you got okay. some? Melissa, you got some? You got it up there again, Andrew? I've got a friend of mine that's in the, passing through the Panama Canal. Yeah. Trying to listen to the show. Homer. Oh. It's Homer. If cool. he's listening, Homer. Hello. <clears throat> hey, hey, Homer. Yeah. What do you got, Andrew? Yeah, we got a lot of commentary about this. Uh, Madre Ravella's Benton commenting pretty consistent through all of this with her commentary. Uh, Generalissimo saying what the troops addressed uh, uh, Santa Ana as. And uh, a lot of other things. A point she wanted to make as well was that, that uh, another inciting factor of all of this was that it was uh, the con the contention over the Constitution of 1824 that was part of what well the Texians and the Tejanos were holding up, and that Santa Ana was not recognizing. And just another inciting factor of all of this leading up to the revolution. Yeah, a lot strange going on back in those okay. days, but it turned into what's now called Texas. Yes, interesting stuff. And Andrew J. Polk, thank you for being who you are and where you are. And Monday through Friday, and <laughs> another historian got their wings. And the Monday through Friday, uh, you were the guy 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. doing Talk El Paso, taking on the politics, which we don't. And, yes, and very you, much so. And we keep it over there, and that's <clears throat> the way it'll stay. Don't worry. And when you run the history show in the future, we uh, we got about two more weeks of doing this, and then you're going to come in like the third week of March, right? Yep, that is the plan. And so when you do that, you're going to make sure that people keep their files straight. I mean, we have some very serious topics that we deal with on both programs, and dealing with them both in each way is very important. Andrew J. Polk, you can do that. All right, see you in a bit on the El Paso History Radio Show. Back in a moment. Pepe's, New Mexico. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. 
El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to down- Major announcement. Here's the second one of the hour here. Um, set your calendar for uh, the whole idea of, of next week, uh, March the 5th, uh, next on the next radio show we do. We're going to discuss the History Channel show called Beyond Oak Island, Pancho Villa's Plunder. And that's with Enrique Gallardo, owner of the Pancho Villa Stash House, is our guest in the studio. And that's in downtown El Paso. And also El Paso was storing Bernie Sargent. And Melissa, you've got the details of that TV show. Yeah, this is to get you set up for that show. It's on March 1st at 8 p.m. We want you all to watch the History Channel. It's a popular TV show that they have on there. It's called Beyond Oak Island. The March 1st episode is the Pancho Villa's Plunder, like you mentioned, and it features the Pancho Villa stash, which is located at 333 Leon Street in downtown El Paso. And the team from Beyond Oak Island will hunt for buried treasures at the stash house of the famous Mexican revolutionary leader and will turn up a number of historic discoveries. Local historians will also be featured on the show. And again, this is Tuesday, March 1st at 8 p.m. on the History Channel. We hope you watch it in the Check in with us next week on the show and talk about it. There's an awful lot of things going on next Tuesday. I mean, the elections yeah. won, State of the Union. Mardi, I already voted. Mardi Gras, <laughs> you know, things like that there. And a lot lot to be done with there. And also one more announcement we need to make about Patricia's crowd coming in. Um, you're invited to meet Friday, March the 11th. Now, that would be next uh, week uh, with the Rio Grande chapter of the Daughters. Oh, in two weeks, actually. Two weeks. The Rio Grande chapter of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas. You're going to meet at the Greenery and Sunland Park Mall, 11 a.m. That's Friday, March 11th. And what is your program? You got that there? It's going to be 4,000 years of Texas history at Keystone Heritage, presented by Bernie Sargent. And, he, and you're also going to talk about some of the uh, Texas Honor Days. 
Yes, March 1st is the Children of the Republic of Texas Founders Day, March 2nd, Texas Independence and Flag Day, March 6th, Alamo Heroes Day, and March 27th, Goliad Day. And you can call me for more information, 915-591-2326. Greenery in Sunland Park. See you there. All right, fair enough. We do have a caller on the phone here. Her name is George. George, you have a question about the map? Where's George? Uh, there he is. Are you speaking to me or yes. what? Yes, George. There you are. You're on the radio. Go ahead. Uh, yes. I wanted to know, I'm, I'm a, that highly paid volunteer at the old El Paso County <laughs> Jail in San Elisario. Are you in the and jail or the outside the jail? I'd like to talk about yep. is the 1836 map of Texas. That's when uh, Texas got its independence from Mexico. And they're they're claiming they're claiming that the territory uh, that they uh, that they had was half of New Mexico and all the way up into Oklahoma. My question is, do the historians there know when that map was made? The 1836 map of Texas. Well, it sounds like it was 1836, but that would be too easy. Uh, any any thoughts on that, either one of you? No, I, I don't have any idea. No. Nah. That map, uh, where it came from, maybe you know, George. Do you know the answer? Uh, no, the only thing is, I know that Texas was made a state in 1845, and at that time, uh, the United States used uh, some of the parts of the map uh, for the boundary between the United States and, and Mexico. And but I, I just wondered, I was just wondering what that partic- when that particular map was made, because there's, uh, Texas is claiming half of New Mexico and up into Colorado and Oklahoma. Andrew, maybe you have an idea. They actually did. I know that they, they felt did. that they yes. had it. Yeah. So yeah, that actually in the map that we have up over on the Facebook page right now, actually from the Daughters of the Republic of Texas site there, that is the boundaries of the Republic of Texas as was claimed after and then forced to be signed by Santa Ana after the culmination of the revolution. And it include all of the areas essentially east of the Rio Grande and then up into, yeah, even Wyoming, it went far enough up into. And so then when you get to the shape of Texas as it exists now, of course, a lot of that, uh, the whole upper panhandle is gone now. And what that ended up becoming is because when it became a state, Texas actually had a lot of debt, I do believe. And mm-hmm. so some of those lands were taken off, turned into other parts of territory. That's New Mexico why, territory. Yeah. Right, New Mexico, Wyoming, those other states. And that's why, among other things, to this modern day, there is not Bureau of Land Management land in Texas, even though in New Mexico there is, because Texas was able to then keep its vast public lands. Yeah. It's a very straight surveyor line, obviously, on the uh, north side of El Paso, going over to uh, you know, the, the, what would that be, Marfa, whoever's over there. In that area in in Texas, and then straight up on on the uh, left side of the Panhandle, that's a surveyor's mark. You can, you can see that. How that occurred, I don't know. George, you have an idea? Uh, no, the, the, I just know that uh, once Texas became a state, then the uh, Texas map looks like it is. It looks the shape is like today's map. Well, yeah, you got two bodies of water, of three actually, with the Gulf of Mexico, the Rio Grande River, and then what's that? The uh, other river on the Red River. Red River on the on the north. So that basically forms most of what is Texas. The rest of it had to be a survey thing. Yeah. And it's interesting because New Mexico was still a territory until what, 1912? Yeah, 1912, they were still a territory. Yet yeah, they had at one time kind of been included in Texas. So. Yeah, and apparently what Andrew's saying is that they, they, yeah. they took, the United States took that to pay off some of the debt, right? Fair enough. Okay. Interesting stories here. Taking a break on the El Paso History Radio Show a little early. We're going to get back to the uh, independence of Texas. And where are we going uh, next, Sharon or Patricia? I guess we're going to start talking about the local chapter there of we go. the Daughters of the Republic of Texas. And what you guys do here. And what we do. Fair enough. Being back in a moment on the El Paso History Radio Show, let's have a phone number just for the heck of it. Yeah, give us a call at 915-544-5876 or 915-544-KTSM. M1, EP. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. 
Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. All right, are you ready for this week only in El Paso, Inc.? After an extensive search, the new Logos Coach is ready for fast play. Also in the Inc., a familiar but long vacant building in downtown El Paso is on the auction block this week. And once just tech lingo, non-fungible tokens have entered the mainstream and how an El Paso native startup has raised millions in investment. That's amazing. El Paso's business channel, El Paso Inc., is available for home or business delivery to receive El Paso Inc. Order it online at elpasoinc.com. And there's a couple of interesting announcements we've talked about today that are going to be in the ink. You'll see those coming up uh, somewhere on page seven, I think. Page seven. Yeah, take a look at that. So, all right. Sharon Fortner and uh, Patricia Kidney. Where are we going now on Texas independence? You've been through all the battles. 
you won the battles, but now did you win the war? We did win the war. Yes, we did. Where do you want to go? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you to you all for having us, because this is one of my goals as the president of this local chapter is to increase the awareness of our chapter. So thank you all for the invitation. This uh, is this is great that we're here today. The uh, chapter of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas. Yes. And so you're looking for more members and there's an event coming up. You might be able to talk to them directly. Uh, what was that again, Patricia? We have that coming up. It's on March 11th uh, at the Greenery at 11 in the morning. So you guys may be able to talk to people there. So. Yes. All right. So, so Sharon Fortner, go ahead. Well, I just want to add an addendum to what Patricia said about the uh, treaties of Velasco. There are actually three of those treaties. Mm -hmm. And Mex the Mexican government never signed those treaties. Oh. And so they continued to harass the people of Texas until 1850. And that was when the Treaty of Guadalupe de Hidalgo was signed. And finally, 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 we were free. And I didn't know that until we started thinking about putting this program together, that the Mexican government didn't recognize it. But it doesn't surprise me. That's a lot of land to just let go to a group of scraggly, ragtag, small groups of people who kept popping up and fighting a far superior army. So we're proud of that in Texas. And your chapter, how, what happens at your meetings? Well, at our meetings, we have always a program about Texas history, El Paso history. And oftentimes, some of our members will tell the story of their family, how they came to Texas, what it took to get there, what their positions were. And so it's always about Texas. It's Texas, El Paso. And the El Paso chapter always, always celebrates the Texas Honor Days. And of all the calendar years, uh, months in the calendar, the only three months that do not have Texas Honor Days are June, July, and August. It was we too hot. It, June, July, and August. It was too hot. Too hot to do anything in Texas? I, I think so, yeah. I don't know. It's never too hot to do anything in Texas. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, um, so the El Paso Rio Grande chapter was actually um, begun around 2005 with the dis dis dissolving of two chapters in the area. One of them was in Canotillo. That was the David G. Burnett chapter. And the other was the Paso del Norte in El Paso. So since then, we have been one united larger group called the El Paso Rio Grande. And we have about 50 plus members. A little less than um, half of them are associates. The rest of them are what we call numbered daughters. And these are people who are fortunate enough to be able to um, prove their lineage back to that oh, period okay. of the Republic. So when you go through the process of applying uh, with a formal application and uh, documents that meet the standards of the application process, then you are lettered and numbered. And I remember my number is 34243. That means prior to me, there were 34,242 women who became members of the Daughters of the Republic. Is it only women? That's the point. At this point, yes, there are only women. There's another organization called the Sons of the Republic of Texas, and they have to go through this same process. Right. Most of the larger cities also have chapters of CRT, which is Children of the Republic of Texas. Okay. Now, El Paso doesn't have an SRT, doesn't have a CRT. And I suppose that's because we need more visibility. So when you meet, where do you meet generally? Sometimes here, there? Well, this year, our our home has been the greenery. Oh. Because they have been so uh, generous uh, providing microphones and private rooms for us. Uh, so that's been our home. But we always meet in February for the essay contest at the El Paso Country Club. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they have been magnanimous hosts to us. And this last month in, in March, 
uh, or in uh, February, February 11th, we had our most favorite meeting of the year, which was our essay contest. Now, I'm starting kind of in the middle of where I wanted to start, but um, promoting Texas history is what the essay contest is all about. And so we have this local winner. Uh, her teacher has also been the um, uh, submission for the district level of the history teacher of the year. Oh. And we're very, very certain that these two people will win district. If they win district, then they'll go on to state. The El Paso Rio Grande chapter has had many state winners. So they've gone from local to district to state. So we, we have a lot to be proud of with our fourth grade, seventh grade students, and our teacher of the year. And those two grades are primarily when Texas history is taught in El Paso That's correct. schools, That's independent correct. school districts. And I, I remember that. And it just, I always lament the fact that they don't really ever have time to teach El Paso history. And they do so only if there's extra time sometimes and a teacher feels like doing it, which I think it should be mandated, but it's not in curriculum. And that's always been a problem, I think, to, to, to our, our world here, that we don't teach El Paso history in there as well. So I'm, what is Keystone? What happened downtown? Well, we do that at our meetings. Um, our past vice president, Betty Phillips, not only is she our Texas History Honor Day chairperson, and she brings those um, celebration moments to us, she's also added as, as uh, Melissa calls it, a moment in El Paso history. There you go. She right. brings us something from El Paso. So as, as a group, we celebrate that as well. Well, that's good to hear because it should be done, and I think it should be taught in those grades in school. Patricia, your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's exciting. The main thing I think that the DRT, the daughters, are all about is the education getting the word out and the younger we can reach these children, the more excited they're going to be mm -hmm. about it. And, and they can all watch the Davy Crockett movie, I suppose. Well, if they want yeah. to, I yeah. mean, it would, well, if, well, that, if, that kind of thing gets them started usually. Well, I might tell you when the last uh, movie was released, I think in 2005 or something like that, Dean Underwood and I attended here and we sat on the first row back not the first row of the risers. Mm -hmm. And we took notes of everything we thought was wrong with oh, the movie by the light of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> that is some kind of dedicated Texas. Oh, history. it is. And, That's, and that it's too bad. They don't follow history exactly, but at least they promoted some of exactly. it. Exactly. It was great. So tell us about the essay contest. How do people get involved and generally what, what is, in, what is involved? Well, this year we've had a committee uh, in our chapter, five very dedicated associates who organized expertly and contacted every single ISD, every private school, charter school, parochial school, homeschool groups as, as they could to give them every bit of information they needed to link them to the application process, the subjects of the, the contest. This year, for instance, the fourth graders wrote about the founding fathers. That subject was chosen by our historian general in conjunction with the efforts of the Texas Education Association. And so fourth graders wrote about Jose Antonio Nabato. The seventh graders wrote about Sam Houston. So every year it's a different subject and it's the same all across the state. And they're judged locally by very strict standards and then they're judged at the district level, and there are 10 districts in Texas, and the winners of each district are then sent to state, the state convention that's held in May, mm -hmm. and a state winner is chosen. And there are many prizes, monetary prizes, certificates, all kinds of things that really appeal to kids, and in promoting Texas history, there's not a better place than in the schools. Of course. I mean, again, it would be great if curriculum included El Paso history, because I think El Paso history rivals uh, a lot of things that have gone on across the, the state of Texas, just personally. And what would you think? I mean, we say Texas history begins in El Paso. We're talking about the Spanish going way back before any of uh, Mexico existed, pretty much. Well, yes, it does. It certainly does that. But I think the primary 
focus of DRT is the Republic of Texas. Of course. This is, you know, the, the revolution, the Republic, that's what we focus on. The daughters of the Republic of Texas. During those 10 years that Texas was a sovereign nation. It was 10 years. It was 10 years. And so there is a, a boundary marker. And I think um, we have a picture of that yeah. that we can put up. Yes, that's, that is the last original boundary marker. And it's on the Louisiana-Texas border near Deadwood. And so it's the last vestige that, that the really shows the, the sovereignty of an independent nation. And that's, again, uh, to be stated that, should, that, that Texas is the only state in the union that has that kind of background and distinction. Exactly. Exactly. That's why the Texas flag can be flown at the same height as the United States flag. Oh, my. I didn't realize that one. Yes. That's a good one. Now, if that's on two separate poles. If they're on one pole, obviously yeah. the Texas flag is secondary. And it's interesting to see you all come in here, red, white, and blue, looking like Texas, both of you. Well, we planned that. Oh, of course you did. <laughs> Great stuff here. And uh, by the way, just to re restate, we're also probably going to end up going to Pepe's. Yes, that's true. If you want to come talk more Texas history, this crowd will yes. be there. Melissa, you've been over there clicking on your computer pretty heavily. What do you got? Doing? Oh, I was just kind of looking back on some of the other people that were very important. Was Sam Houston, of course, who was the first VP, and then you had. Uh, and I always forget this gentleman's name. I apologize. It's uh, Zavila. Uh, Zavila. He was uh, Lorenzo de Zavila. He was the first VP, <clears throat> uh, vice president of the Texas Republic. And, <laughs> and the unique part of that, I always people don't understand or don't always know, is the fact that it was the blending of the two uh, cultures coming together to fight one common cause, and that was Santa Ana. And that is kind of carried through with Texas, I think, to this day in many ways. Yeah, that's kind of what Texas is. It's a mix of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess the common cause is is our own state and our own history. Exactly. And yeah. then, when they break apart and fight each other, don't do that. I mean, you know, no. we, got, we got what we got. I don't think we're going to change that anytime soon. So, uh, Andrew, you got something we're going to know about in there? Not yet? Okay. Uh, it, it, as it goes, we're going to take a break here and come back and uh, wrap this up on the El Paso History Radio Show. You can look at us on Facebook. And how do they find us there? Well, you go to the El Paso History Radio Show Facebook page, and, and you can listen, watch us live through that page, but you can also go back and look at the shows that we've had in the past. Uh, just a lot of great information. If you need some history and want to see the guests in person, that's a great place to do it. And also, it's archived on YouTube at YouTube El Paso mm -hmm. History TV. YouTube.com. Uh, 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 TV. <laughs> well, so it goes. It's a lot to say. Ah, it's a lot there. <laughs> All right, back in just a moment on the El Paso History Radio Show. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina served. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. 
The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Everything happens right at the end of the show. we got a caller we may not get to, but we'll talk to him after the show. And also, just a quick reminder that Tuesday night on uh, March the 1st, 8 p.m. on the History Channel, take a look at a local El Paso story yeah. on a national cable network. Yeah, and again, we get promoted. Well, we'll see. We'll see what actually they say. They shot a lot of stuff. Who knows, <laughs> who knows what they say? All right, Sharon Fortner and, and uh, Patricia Kitty, thank you for being here. Sharon, you've got a couple of things you want to wrap up with. I do. There, there are so many things that the DRT does to promote, perpetuate, and honor our um, state's history. A couple of things. In 1952 and in 1986, the DRT sponsored annual fellowships to UT students who are researching state's history. So we really do take the perpetuation and promotion seriously. The state um, owned properties that the daughters purchased. One of the most important ones obviously was the Alamo. And the Alamo was saved not once, but, but twice and maybe three times. By the DRT. By the DRT. And um, I, I think that is probably one of our most important accomplishments that, mm -hmm. that, that we can point to because it, it was the beginning of everything that happened after that, of the precedent of the freedoms and the, the boundaries of the United States and, if they and visit, the power that the United States has now. And the people, people visit Austin, you have a headquarters there to look at. Yes, that is being called the Republic of Texas History Center. We are almost finished with the completion and the furnishing that will house the headquarters. It will house the Republic of Texas Museum. Um, it will house a catering center, um, a kitchen, event center. And if anybody wants to contribute to that, um, all donors to that will be honored at that facility. And they so can they do can that call, online? 
Um, they can they can go online to drtinfo.org or drtinfo.org slash members and can contribute. But they can call me. They can call me at 915-491-3969 and I can put them, you know, in touch with an address. 491 39 Six, Six nine. nine. Okay. Do you have speakers Correct. that go out by any chance that go out to groups to talk about the DRT? Do we have what? Do you have speakers that go out to different groups? Well, that's 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 another thing I didn't get to, and I wanted to tell you about that. I personally am going to a junior high school next month, hopefully dressed period correct, and I'm going to tell a story or two or three from Texas history. So yes, we make presentations to schools to businesses we donate texas flags to businesses and they can find you again that phone number and they is, can find me at that phone number and it is 915-491-3969 all right you got a, about a minute for anything else we missed well the d the drt started in 1891 and it was a very inauspicious beginning and i'm so proud that all these years later, there are 98 chapters throughout the state. We have a little under 7,000 members. And these women are totally dedicated financially, emotionally, physically. There's a lot of work that goes into keeping things going and promoting and perpetuating Texas history. If you want to get involved locally, you do have an event coming up. Real quick, Patricia. That's May the 11th at the Greenery. Uh, it would be Mar March. March. March 11th. Oh, my goodness. I'm already in March May. 11th. March 11th, <laughs> yes. At the luncheon. At uh, Greenery. Patricia Kidney, thank you for coming in. Sharon Fortner, good to see you. And we'll see every Melissa, we're going to Peppy's. Yes, we are. We've yes. got information on DRT and where they can reach uh, posting on Facebook, both the live page and the, the standard page. Andrew, thanks in the control room there. And Johnny, I'll get to you on the phone off the show. Thank you all for being with us. We'll see you next week on the El Paso History Radio Show.